In this video, we're going to learn how to write a sine x plus b cos x in the form r sine x plus alpha. This is useful because r will give us the amplitude of our function, its maximum, its minimum value, and alpha will give us the shift that we've moved the function along. To do these problems, there are four simple steps that we need to go through. The first thing we do is got to expand the compound um, angle side of the formula. The next thing we do is we equate both sides of the formula to sine x and then cos x. We then divide the sine function by the cos function, which will give us a tan function, which we can then take the inverse of to find our um, value of alpha. And then we square um, each function add the answer together and then we simplify to get a value for r and then we can just simply rewrite our a sine x plus b cos x in the desired form. So here's an example for us to consider. One thing to bear in mind is that when we look at this side of the equation here, sometimes a question won't say a um, r sine x plus alpha but it might be r sine x minus alpha, it might also be cosine as well. But the process we go through in each case is exactly the same. So the first thing we do is we're going to expand this using the compound angle formula and we end up with, um, obviously the left hand side is the same, but the other side is going to be r times sine x plus cos, sorry, sine x cos alpha plus r sine alpha cos x and that's purely taken um, from our formula books. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to equate for sine x and we're going to equate for cos x. So if we do this now for sine x, well we've got 5 times sine x on this side, hence the 5, and r times cos alpha of sine x on this side, hence the r cos alpha. And in the same way when we do it for cos x, we get 12 equals r sine alpha. Now we always divide the sine um, function by the cos function and that's because sine divided by cos gives us our tan, the r's cancel and 12 divided by 5 is 2.4. So alpha is just going to be tan to the minus 1 of 2.4. We'll use that value later. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to square this function, square this function and add them both together. So 5 squared is 25, 12 squared is 144. This squared is going to be r squared cos squared alpha. This squared is r squared sine squared alpha. And then what I've done is taken one step extra. I've actually factorised out the r squared so we get this. Now hopefully you recognise that sine squared alpha plus cos squared alpha equals 1. So that effectively goes and we're left with r squared equals 169, so r equals the square root of 169, which is obviously 13. So now we know the value of r, which is 13. We know the value of alpha, which is 10 to the minus 1 of 2.4. We can rewrite this side out. So we get the answer that this part here, 5 sine x plus 12 cos x, is equivalent to the r value, which we worked out is 13, sine x plus tan to the minus 1 of 2.4, which in radians is 1.18. In the description below you can find a link to a worksheet that has questions that you can try on your own. I hope you found this video helpful. Stay in infield with Winfield.